Hey everyone, Corey here, and in today's video we'll be going over how to use Radiant. But first we want to go into the Call of Duty War at War shortcut, go under our mods folder, and just delete everything in here. You'll probably see the setup map that we made and stuff like that. Uh, it'll just And the other ones will end up giving you errors. I already deleted them, so I do apologize. But just delete everything. And then what we'll do is we'll go to our launcher, we'll open up Radiant, and then I'll just show you uh, how to use Radiant for a bit. I'll teach you some of the basics that way when we start to uh, actually making your map you're not as confused so this is what radiant looks like and yours might look something like this when it opens up or like that and your textures might be kind of uh, bigger or anything like this uh, so first things what you want to do is go up to your view and then make sure that the light preview is on enable and also make sure entities as is skinned otherwise you won't see stuff then go up to your textures change the window scale to 25 percent and then you can just drag this little thing down out of your way you don't need it and then you can drag these down to where you need them as well. Now this is the 2D viewer and this is the 3D viewer. The 2D viewer is good. Uh, I think the recorder kind of messes up the grids, but it's all grid-like and uh, you can change your grid up here. Uh, you could use the symbols, uh, your keys and stuff like that. Most likely we're going to be on 8 most of the time unless we need to line something up perfectly. Then we'll uh, hit the number 3 or, or anything like that and you can switch between them. So as you can see, they might be changing. Again, with the recorder, it makes it a little weird, so I do apologize. To add, a, uh, add brushes, what you can do is you can just drag it out, and as you can see, um, we, we built something. Now you can go to Control-Tab. That's going to change the view. Uh, the first view was on top-down. This one's going to be side, and then this one's going to be the other side, as you can see here. So you have three views of each thing. Usually you'll use the top down to do it, uh, to do everything, and then you'll just change this if you need to make it bigger or smaller, or line it up uh, perfectly, you know, if we wanted it centered or anything like that. Um, as you can see, I'm dragging, so if you're above the object, uh, if you can go like this, click and drag, you'll make it smaller or bigger. This way, the same way, this way, the same way, and then this way, the same way. You can do all of them that way. To drag it around, to move the item, you just click it and drag. Uh, hit it. Hit escape to deselect it and then shift click to select it. If you click it, you won't, you'll just make another one. So you have to hit shift click to select the ones you want. And then, as you can see, you can delete them by selecting them and hitting backspace. So it's pretty much all you really need to know with the movement of this. Um, the only other tool is if we wanted to cut, you would hit the X key or go up to here to cut. And then you could choose a straight line. And then if you wanted the one that you that it left, for example, we'll keep this one. But let's say we want the other one. Uh, I believe it's Control Enter will give us the other one, and then you can hit Enter or Control Z, obviously. Or we could cut it, and then maybe it says maybe it gave us the one we wanted. Maybe we did want the side. You could just hit Enter. Or if you want both sides, well, which we'll be doing a lot. If you want both sides, you just hit Shift Enter. Now you actually have two of them, and you can select them individually. Uh, maybe you wanted to make a. This is how we do doorways and stuff. So, be like that. Um, then you can Control Z. Now the other things is the textures. So textures, usage, and then tools. Most likely, when we build a map, we'll be using Caulk. Caulk is a tool that. Um, it's invisible when rendered, so if you can't see it, you should always use the caulk tool. So you always want to build your levels with the caulk tool and then texture them later. This way it saves resources, because if you can't see it, why well, have a texture on it? Up here as well to textures, you can go to usage, and then you can do interior walls, trim, exterior wall, ceilings, roof, ground, floor, stuff like that. Another cool thing, though, is you can actually go up to textures, usage, all, and then you can come over here and hit the F. And then you can actually search based on textures. As you can see here, we'll pull it up. These are all our wood textures. Maybe we wanted concrete, so we could type in concrete. And it's just it's just an easier way to find textures, uh, especially if you're making like a uh, you know a wood house. You obviously would like to use different types of wood and and stuff like that. Then the other thing is you can hit the U on your keyboard, and that's going to show all the textures that you're actually using in the game. So let's make another texture. We'll go to texture, 
we'll just choose a ground and choose this one. So if you shift click it, you can select the texture and apply it to everything. However, like I said, you don't want to usually do that. So hit control Z. Usually what you want to do is just select the face. So it's control shift click and that's just going to select the face. Like I said, you want everything that's not seen as caulk. So if we're doing the ground, obviously we would only change the top part. So sh control shift click will allow us to select that face. We could also select multiple faces if we wanted to do more of that. That. And then also with uh, shifting or control shifting or anything like that, you can also use the middle mouse button on a texture that you want and then it'll apply it to it as well. And then you can just click and turn it back on. So it's pretty much all the use for that. Uh, the only other thing though is you can right click to move around this, scrolling out and in with your scroll bar will move it. And now let's go over to movement in the 3D view. So let me just build something here that we can look. And also make sure that you never have overlapping. Uh, as you can see, it kind of fights. So always do that. So never do that. Never have an object overlap another object. But let's say we wanted to, this was our map, and we wanted to look around it. So with our keyboard, we could use the A key, and that's going to give us increment looking up. Z will make us look down the same way. I usually don't use those. D will let you go up, and C will let you go down. And then comma will let you go left and then full stop or period will let you go right. Now I usually don't use the keyboard but if you want to do the controls like that it's just quick and simple to just hit a button or two and then with the arrow keys they work as well these will pretty much be your movement so the left arrow key will let you look the whole way around in increments the right arrow key will let you go right the whole way around in increments the up arrow key will let you go forward and the down arrow key will let you go backwards. But then the real way to do the movement is with the mouse. So if you right click in the viewer you can move it all around with your mouse. As you can see we can go left and right, we can go forward and backwards, we can turn the whole way around and all of that. Now if you want to go up, so this would pretty much, the right click is pretty much the arrows. If you want to go up and down or left to right you hold control and then right click. And now you can go up, down, left, right this would be the d c comma and full stop or the period and then the last one is if you hold down control shift right click you can look around as if you were stationary and just looking with your head and then you could also look the whole way around if you were some kind of alien but that's pretty much it it'll take a while to get used to most likely you'll just be holding down the right click you know find an area if you need to move up a bit or anything like that you can just do so and then just go back to just right clicking and moving around and and if you go slow you'll get the hang of it and then you can start going faster and I also use the scroll rail because it makes me move forward but as you can see it's kind of easy to navigate uh, I do believe me though it was confusing the first time I started doing it so I mean it will take a little bit to get used to it, but then you'll be good and as you can see we can like scroll through this and turn around and all that stuff and then we can go up and down and yeah that's pretty much it if there's anything else we really need to show you I'll just go over it when I'm doing it um, but pretty much I showed you the basics of the stuff that you'll use shift click shift click you can select multiples control shift click will select a face and then if you choose a texture you can change them and then like I said we could uh, cut them with X shift X and then Cut. You could also cut in angles. Uh, also hit escape with the X and never control Z. But uh, you could also cut an angle if you wanted that. So we could do, we'll do these for stairs later on, but then shift enter and then we could delete this one. And then backspace deletes and then we could just click that and middle click and texture it. And there you go. Now we did an angle on that one. That looks really weird, but kind of cool at the same time. So that's pretty much it, Radiant. Um, like I said, anything else we might need to teach you, I'll just teach you in the future tutorials. Uh, actually, I'll show you one more thing. So these little things up here are rotates. You can rotate it on the Z axis, the Y axis, and the X axis, depending on. Uh, we'll use this um, for when we place stuff in the map usually. But that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I'll see you guys in the next one where we'll build our room. So see you then.